The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the first Robotics Canada Ask the Expert webinar. Um, these have been bi-weekly webinars, but during build season, we're going to up them to be weekly. Uh, in general, they're targeted to the FRC community and they run Tuesdays at 7 o'clock at night. Uh, you can look for the link in the FRC team uh, blast that comes to you. And the first Robotics Canada Facebook page always has it up. And also it goes out on the first Robotics Canada socials, so you can find the link there. Uh, you just in, you know, the logistics here, you've entered the webinar on mute. So I'd ask you to stay muted because that helps audio for everyone. And if you have any questions, just raise your hand. There's a icon you can click um, to be noticed or just type your question in the question box. And we're going to try and address them as we go through the webinar. Um, so. Uh, first of all, welcome. I am Sarah Sills. I'm your moderator tonight, and I'm a first senior mentor with FIRST Robotics, although you might remember me from SWAT 771. I used to be the mentor there. Uh, my goal is to help you get the most from this event tonight, uh, and tonight we're going to start with a little bit of news, and then we're going to focus on computer-aided design, and then move on to tips on finding and keeping sponsors, and then a little farewell at the end. Um, we're hoping to involve as many teams as possible as experts in future webinars, and the topics are on a variety of technical and non-technical topics. So if your team would like to be the expert on a webinar, just email me, you see the email on the screen, and I'll get you slotted in. Uh, teams love hearing from other teams, and this is gracious professionalism at its finest. Uh, a couple of news updates to start. Uh, everybody has signed up for their first and second event, so that's awesome. If you feel like you just want one more play, two is not enough, uh, there are some events that you can register for, a third event. Um, and, you know, you just might want to mark on the calendar that provincial day, whether your team is attending or whether you just want to uh, turn up and catch the excitement. Uh, it's in Mississauga. Uh, kickoff is coming, oh my gosh, it's so soon, on January 4th, and look at this. I was super impressed when I started thinking about how much Canada has grown. So we're running kickoff this year at uh, 10 events across Canada, um, so it's really exciting that we have the West going. So there's one in uh, Alberta and one in British Columbia, as well as you know a number of locations across Ontario. Um, so that's what FIRST Robotics Canada is kind of getting up to. It's not um, just a local thing. We're spreading across the country. Um, if you're not able to attend a webinar, that's, I mean, a kickoff, um, that's where you get your kit of parts. So make sure you find some other team that can pick up your robot for you, your kit of parts for you, and they need to take this uh, surrogate kit pick up form with them. So make sure you um, get that form. It came in your email blast and complete it and give it to whoever's going to uh, kick off in case your team's not making the trip. Um, I'm just going to mention once more uh, Hobbin's homework. We're trying to get uh, communications to you know be more streamlined. At this point, the email blasts go to the lead mentors of your team. But if you have a team communication officer uh, and you give that email to uh, John Hobbins at the, uh, his email, uh, then the, we can send that uh, first blast, uh, the FRC blast, to that person as well, which might be easier to kind of disseminate information. There's a lot of information that comes out. Um, so that's just another set of eyes on it. And, you know, you might be able to share that information. So that's our news for this week. Um, I wanted to uh, you know, get on to our technical topic for tonight. We're going to be talking about computer aided design or CAD, and it's going to be uh, 1305, which is called Ice Food, is their team name. They're out of North Bay, they're a community team, and um, they meet at Canador College, and they have 
They run also one of the hubs for FIRST. So uh, at any time, but in particular during build, if you have questions and you're anywhere near North Bay or actually anywhere across Canada, because they're just that kind of a team where they'd be happy to help anyone, um, you know, you can get your questions to them. Their, their contact info is on the FIRST Robotics Canada uh, website and you can send in your questions and they can either link you with you know a video or provide direct answers to your question um, or connect with you you know via phone or whatever needs to happen to get your questions answered they're awesome um, tonight the whole team is not going to talk to you uh, we have Brian Kelso who's going to talk to you he is one of the mentors of the team and uh, he mentors for FRC and I know he also helps with an FLL team there as well. Perhaps he does more. I don't even know. Their whole <laughs> family, the Kelso family, is like a family of first. So uh, they started with their older son is kind of who started it all, Aiden, who's currently uh, at UOIT in school there. Uh, Jessica is... Uh, was on the team. She won Dean's List, so she was a Dean's List finalist, so that's pretty cool. Jared is now uh, one of the captains on the team, and uh, Ella, their youngest, is uh, now on the team as well. So really, it's just a first family, I would say. So I'm going to turn it over to Brian, and just give me a minute to get um, his, his slides up, um, and he will run through that. Perfect. Thank you for the introduction. Great, so like I, like Sarah said, my name is Brian Kelso. I'm one of the mentors on Team 1305, and our team has been using CAD we, for, for full time for five years now, where we've been designing most of the robots. We, the teams used it a little bit in years before with some of the basic structures, but since we've been, the past five years, it's really helped us in the, building better robots. So, next slide. <laughs> well, I consider CAD, it's, it, it's what I do for a living. So when I joined the team, it was definitely something I wanted as many kids to learn. And it also helped improve the quality of our robot. And I consider it one of the best tools in the build room. Like everybody says they want like a 3D printer, a CNC router or something, but the first thing after your basic tools you should get is have some students learn CAD. Good, next slide. So when we first implemented, the reason was, was to save time. So 13 or five years ago, we still had troubles trying to complete the robot in our, in the short six weeks that were required and usually put it in the bag, 90% complete. But since we started CADing, we've increased that and we can now, we can almost build a robot in four weeks. And the more parts on the robot that you CAD, the more time it saves you. So this is the biggest, people wondering, well, yeah, I don't need to CAD, we can just mock it up and you can. But honestly, it'll be the for the little bit of time it takes to learn CAD, it's a very easy program to learn nowadays. It'll save you uh, tons and tons of time. This is my big quote that I use all the time. Because every year, because of our limited student, we only CAD about 90% of the robot. We never CAD all the nuts, the bolts, the wiring. A lot of the little things, we just, we wing it. And it's funny, because when we go to assemble the final robot, 90% of the time is spent putting together that 10% of the parts that did we did not CAD. And you'll, you'll see it all the time, bolts interfere, no way to run a wire. So that's my biggest advice is how much time it will save your team if your team adopts CAD as one of their tools in their build room. Good, next. So we use it right from day one now. So after we decide our game and we want to build prototypes, and even though it's it's good for the kids to learn and play, but it's your prototypes tell you a lot about how your robot's going to perform. And we've started to use CAD, and we'll actually CAD our prototypes before we actually build them. This way, we'll, have, we'll know the geometry's right. And even if it's not right, we'll know when we test it, it's an easy change in CAD, and we can either recut or remake the parts, and it's just a good record. Good, next slide. 
So another great thing about the CAD is the scale geometry. So everything's to scale. I'm sure everybody understands which it doesn't matter which CAD program you use, they're all scaled. And in FRC, there's lots and lots of rules like ground clearance, robot size, perimeter. And in order to for to do all those and keep within the rules, uh, CAD saves you a ton of time in order to make sure you're not too tall, you don't reach out of your perimeter farther than you're allowed to. And just so the pieces you build are usually, if you do it right, are correct the first time. Okay, next slide. No, we have to just admire that picture for a minute. That yeah. was so exciting. That was uh, like, I think the first three, uh, two robots stand on that uh, level of the platform, super exciting. Yeah. It's actually a good story behind that because, and one, one of the reasons I love FRC, the, the kids, they, they practice it on the practice field before that match and they tested and everything else. And they said, and they asked me, they asked me being the lead coach there, can, can we do it? Can we do it? I said, no, don't do it. If the robot falls and you break the robot, we're out for all the matches. And I go, if you do it, if you need to in finals, eh? And, but no, sure enough, they didn't listen to me. And the first chance they had to do it, they did it <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> it was so exciting. The buzz in the room yeah. was super cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll advance the slide. Okay, and so once you start with the basic CAD and get your geometry and your layouts, you'll quickly find the time savings and everything else. But then just because of the properties of CAD, there's all kinds of advanced features that you get and you don't have to do any work. It'll automatically give you the weight. So it'll give you things like center of gravity, interference detection. When you get really advanced, you can start to use motion analysis or strength analysis and Everybody has to do a bill of material at the end of the build season and it automatically does your build of material. So there, those are just a few of the things I'm sure every team can relate to having a robot that was overweight or the center of gravity was off or one part interfered with another part. And you can, if you do it in CAD, you can hopefully avoid those problems before you get to competition. Okay. And then this is something this, which is new to our team now too, is the CNC aspect of it. So this should be something all teams should be striving to get to is the CNC. And this could be as simple as a 3D printer or a CNC router, CNC lathe. Anyway, it's every team should be striving to get to this stage. And in order to do that, you will need CAD. And so it's really great when you can custom design your parts and then cut them either by yourself or by a sponsor. Okay. Okay, so this is a question every team, all these teams, when they see our CAD and they like it and they say, oh, that's great. We want to use CAD. Which program should we use? And I put Onshape, Fusion, SolarWorks, Creo, Inventor, some of the major ones, and there's 10 more CAD packages out there. And everybody wants to know which one their team should use. But the answer is it doesn't matter. Just pick whichever one you can get implemented and start modeling the fastest. And I, people would disagree with me on that, but I've seen teams for years uh, wanting to implement CAD and discuss for years and years and never ever do it. But honestly, if you bring start with one CAD system, the next year you can actually switch and you can change and you can try them all depending on what your mentors bring to the table, what your school brings to the table, what you have access to, what computers you have. There's so many different things and I'd almost need to talk to every team to recommend the perfect one for them. So my, my biggest recommendation is it doesn't really matter whichever one they feel they can get implemented and start modeling the quickest in is the right CAD system to get started with. Oops. So again, it's a big question, which CAD program? So I actually stole this line off of Chief Delphi. And so pretty good, someone else sharing their opinions on the different CAD packages. And I agree with most of his things. So our team uses SolidWorks. I find it's one of the most robust, most powerful packages out there. And it's also widely used in the industry. So it's good for the kids to learn. Um, but it also requires a lot of PC power, which is probably one of the cons of it. 
Onshape and Fusion 360 are both web-based CAD packages. So they're both good in that because they don't require a, such a large computer and they also have really great online collaboration tools. So those are other two. Inventor is a good one. It's been around for a long time. But uh, again, and all these, all five of these programs are free to first people in the first program. So my team, usually right after the competition season ends, we apply for our, our new licenses of SolidWorks and you request however many seats you require for your team and they gladly give them to you and then we're, we're, like everything it's best to learn most of these tools in the off season and so even right now i just pushed out and got a lot of my new students interested and i send them the link how to install the cad themselves and how, which tutorials they should do and their goal is to do that on their own time which the kids these days are more than capable of doing. And then once that's done, I will help them and work with them to show them more details on how to use their new skills they learn to design a FRC robot. So out of all these packages, again, it doesn't matter which one, they all have their pros and cons. It depends what resources you have available. So like I said, it doesn't matter which one, just pick one. I liked putting this um, at this time of year as well because I found some of the students would do it over their Christmas holidays because they had less homework, so they would work through the tutorials and come to the to the kickoff better prepared. Yeah, yeah, and same here. I have a few students that just came on board, and they're when they find out that we get free CAD, and they're now that they've actually seen what it can do, they're more than interested, and. But they need to take make that initiative to learn the basics, which is easy to do. Like uh, you can just like every other. At first, it gets intimidating, and kids say, "I can't." But no, they, like you can give them a an iPad, a cell phone, and they don't read the instructions, and they learn how to use it. And it's, the CAD program is no different. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I think I touched on some of this already, but how they learn. So each software package has built in tutorials and over to the screen to the left, I showed you SolidWorks. And so that's the screen I send to the, the students. And there's actually there's five tutorials on the getting started. And those five tutorials are 30 minutes each. And that's all the kids need to do to be skilled enough to model an FRC robot. And then there's 500 other tutorials if they really want to go far and above. But just because of the level of CAD required for FRC robot, it's not, you don't have, because 90% of the parts are downloaded from suppliers and vendors, <laughs> and there's only 10% of the parts, and they're usually really simple aluminum extrusions, and it's not really any highly complicated parts that we're CADing. They only need to know the basic skills and you can put an FRC robot together in just a few days on the computer. But so that's the, the best way to get started is using the built-in tutorials. And every one of the CAD packages, as soon as you get in, you hit the help menu and there's tutorials. I've worked in all of them and they, they're all there. And, they're, and it's not too hard to jump from one package to the other. So if you start an inventor, you can jump into SolidWorks or vice versa. Uh, mentors, of course, there's a great resource. Hopefully every team has a mentor that has some CAD background, and that's uh, a, a big plus, but it's not required. Because, like I said, all the SolidWorks, Inventor, Fusion 360, they're all free. And your mentors will have the codes that they got in their virtual kit of parts. If you don't have them, talk to your senior mentors. And then the YouTube series. There's videos galore, all created by FRC teams to show how to use the CAD program and relate it to your FRC. So like some SimBots have a great one. I just listed a few. And if you went onto YouTube and searched any of those, they're all come up and they got like multi steps and you just watch the video and do the work and, and they show you the tips and the tricks. And people are amazed like, cause our team really loves to use belts. And how do you get the space in the belts correctly? And we don't do it. The CAD does it for you. You just put the belt in and it puts the holes in the right spot for you. So 
That's pretty for cool. People who struggle with some of the simple things and are tired of taking the part off and on and cutting it six, seven times, <laughs> CAD's the way to go. Good. Okay, so this is this is one of my biggest things and I love it when a, one of the students start into CAD because uh, real quickly, just with our team's been CADing for at least over five years, our library, which we share and we just share it through uh, OneDrive is full of parts. Every We've downloaded over the years so many parts from all, every different supplier, VexPro, AndyMark, McMasterCar. And like I said, 90% of the robot is downloaded there's only 10 percent that are actually new parts that you're building or designing so our library is so full now when we start a new season and have to cat our robot we usually just grab parts or assemblies or that have already been created and so there's really not as much work as you think and there's also a ton of resources online like everything else and grab cad 3d content central and i can go on and on and on but the 3d models that exist out there are uh, amazing <laughs> and that's our you know every every team most almost every team publishes their cad or their robot at the end of the season we do we put our robots up on grab cad anybody can download them and it's it's such a great resource so you can say oh that's a great way to do it and you can use it as is or you can take it and make it better so Again, tons and tons of resources out there. So that's about it for that one. And this is also one of my favorite parts uh, at kickoff. All the big CAD programs will release a 3D CAD of the field. And this is one of the things we download, we download right away because it quickly gives you a scale and size and the views from the driver station and it helps make uh, strategy decisions right in the initial days a lot better. And you get to see the little details of the field and where your robot could get stuck. And and we actually, we put our old robots from the CADs onto the field and we drag them around and, and we actually strategize using CAD. So it's a great communication. You can measure stuff, you know, resources. So, Anyway, it's just another big plus of if your team knows how to use CAD, this will be one of the first things they'll grab is the field. I love how you put your old robots on the field. That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the measurements is critical because, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I, they tell you so much information and then you're like, well, how big is the ball and how high is the hole that you're trying to get it through or whatever it is. So that's... Well, yeah, especially when you go from the animation and you say, oh, that, oh well, it, the animation is not quite to scale and it never has been yeah so that's when you put a robot from last you know the year before where everybody knows okay that was a small robot or a big robot and you put that on the field and all of a sudden and then when you put three robots on the field the same size oh there's no room for you to get around or move there and you start to see things right away hmm. interesting and i think i was through that pretty fast that's pretty much all i have you did. I'm going to check if we have questions. So I'm just kind of looking at questions. And I had a couple of things I was going to ask. You mentioned about sharing your CAD. I think one of the things that um, I recommend as being useful is putting it up on Blue Alliance as well, um, because that's a place where if you see another robot at a competition and you're thinking, wow, how did they do that? You know, the teams are so awesome with uh, sharing and one of the ways is through their CAD. So you can pull up their CAD of their robot and have a look at how it was that arm designed to be able to lift that or whatever it did that you were impressed with. And it's also good for your team history because then, um, you know, even when you change computers or whatever happens, you know, um, you have your CADs kind of stored in a place you can still access it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and GrabCAD has a library and there's a, that's a whole, there's a lot of details on how you share the CAD files between the team and members because our team, most of the CAD's done after hours. So right. we don't have a very large team. So the, we come, we build, and then we'll go home and CAD for hours. Yeah. And then 
back and build some more and then we'll go home. So it's usually people working in different places. And so we share it just again through, we use Dropbox. Well, sorry, we used to use Dropbox. Now we use OneDrive, but it's all the same. Um, could you yeah, comment on you... Uh, GitHub as well? You still yeah, we use that? GitHub. I don't know if there's a limit for how much file size you can use on GitHub. Hmm. Maybe that's more for programming. Yeah. Right. Well, that's super cool. I don't see any questions right now, but if you have questions and you're watching this later on your own time, there's an email address right there. So you can uh, reach out to Brian and I know he'd be happy to answer or help you find the answer. Um, so any final thoughts there, Brian? No, no, uh, like I said, anybody feel welcome to email me directly, especially if you're a team new, just thinking about getting into CAD. I can definitely, because I'm familiar with all the CAD programs out there, I can help you make the right decisions. But other than that, I hope everybody has a great season. I like that. Um, and then uh, I'm going to move on. I'm just changing screens again. Move on to um, the sponsor part of it. But I've asked Brian to stay on the line um, because uh, their team also is very strong on sponsors. So um, I think he may have some uh, useful information to add as well. And this is just kind of a high level pro uh uh, suggestions, I guess, because there are many, many different ways of uh, finding sponsors and keeping your sponsors. But I think sometimes it's good to have a place to start or, or to, you know, think about some new ideas. Yeah. So, um, first of all, just finding sponsors. You know, even when you're just driving around town, I used to kind of, you know, think what sponsors are on the street and who could I reach out to and sort of make a list. If you're physically not wanting to do that, uh, use your online map and see what businesses are near your school or your meeting place. Um, if you can see a relationship, you know, that perhaps they can do uh, tools or machining or things that you can reach out to them for a specific, that's great. But, um, uh, you know, just kind of always keep uh, aware and and looking, looking out for potential sponsors. Um, I, for a number of years, didn't even think about food sponsors, and that was a big mistake because there were, it takes a lot of food to build a robot, I would just say. <laughs> they're teenage kids, they're hungry. Um, so we reached out to uh, some grocery stores. Uh, I know other teams have reached out to food manufacturers or uh, restaurants. Um, so even if you can get them to donate one meal for the team or, you know, a meal a week, you know, whatever, Panago uh, uh, sponsored a team once. So there can be, a, um, you know, just be creative, I guess, uh, and think about that. In kind, I mentioned, you know, maybe you need some printing done so you could reach out to a print shop. Could they do it at a reduced price or if not for free? Um, you know, so some some benefit. Um, for whatever it is you need, maybe a hardware store will give you a, the um, the um, contractor's discount instead of having to pay full price. So you can kind of look at ways to uh, make it easy for them to support you. Ask your team, like so your students might have some ideas of who they think. Uh, your mentors might know either their company or other companies that might be willing to sponsor. Um, keep your eyes open because you might see a plaque on a wall somewhere that that, that that business sponsors sports teams. So then you could, you know, approach them like, oh, I see you like sponsoring teams. You know, we have a team. Um, uh, and, you know, so those are a number of different ways just to kind of think about who you might approach. Did you want to add anything there, Brian? Uh, yeah, the com community clubs is another one that we have just started with and they have been actually very generous so oh that's like, awesome thanks clubs and a few of those other ones there and they're been good for multiple years too so. oh awesome um okay and then preparing to speak to them so you do have to take a minute to get yourself organized so 
prepare like just a cover letter of what it is you're asking for or a sample email. So you, you might choose to um, you know, reach out electronically. Um, but then you should tweak each one so you make it personal to them. So it doesn't, so they don't just get a form letter. Try and make it as personal as you can to their business and what they might be able to do for you. Um, give, put together some kind of a package of why they should sponsor. Um, you know the benefits that they would get by doing this. Um, consider levels or tiers. And I know a lot of teams will do like, if you're a bronze level sponsor, then you will get these things. And if you're a silver sponsor, then we'll do these things. So kind of think about what could you offer. It doesn't always have to be, you know, monetary, but businesses are often interested in, you know, publicity or getting their name out there and, um, or, you know, uh, helping students know their name their company name so that students might think of them in the future. So kind of think what benefits is it for them? Um, some, uh, some teams look for lots of small sponsors. So that's the 100 for 100. So they, they were in a smaller town um, and they felt that they didn't really have a big business that would be able to pony up a lot of money. So their approach was to approach to, go to a lot of small businesses and ask everybody to give a hundred. I think they even had like a, a checkerboard square or something. So you could like buy a square. And um, so if you think about it, that's your $10,000 if you do that. So, you know, people that's would buy a square. And, and um, so I thought that was kind of creative to get mm -hmm. some of those small sponsors going. And uh, to make a wish list because some companies won't want to give you money but they might have things that they could give you. For example, um, we had somebody who, on our team whose parents worked at Microsoft. So, you know, Microsoft, it was a really big company and it was hard to get them to sponsor an individual team at that point. Um, they're an awesome sponsor for First Umbrella, but as an individual team, that was challenging. But they uh, were super willing to give laptops to our drive team. So that was mm -hmm. like an easy thing for them to give and it saved us a lot of money. So, um, and also like a tool company or, you know, uh, even parents, you might have some tools on your list that the parents might think, oh, well, we've got one of those. We could give them that if that mm -hmm. would help them. So a wish list can be useful. Um, add your sponsor information to your website um, so that you can refer your sponsors to your website and they could see this information is just there. That helps them internally. So maybe you've got the in with somebody you know, but they can send an email to somebody else in their company saying like, here's this team and take a look at their stuff. Um, and if, you know, they aren't, able to give you money or things, always remember to think about mentors. So like your team might be in a position where they need a mentor to help with tools or with business or with machining. So maybe they could uh, just, uh, not just, but maybe they have a person there that can help. Um, so anything to add for preparation? Um, I, again, I, I always think, uh... FRC teams sell themselves short. It's in, in your Y sponsor package. So most businesses love to sponsor local teams. And if you can make them understand why they should sponsor a first team and what a first team does in the community and how it gives back and how it teaches the students and how it improves life for everybody. Uh, it, it's it, if you don't sell yourself short and actually push those points, it's actually not as difficult as you think. Most companies are quite proud and happy to sponsor an FRC team. That's cool. I like um, mentioning that you give back because not a lot of um, people that are asking for money can show that they give back to communities. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, and then when you're approaching them, okay, so you've got your materials already, you've identified who you want to talk to. So now you have to, you know, put you have to say exactly what you want. So this I found was hard for students to like say an amount, but think about what amount you you think they might be able to give you. Like, is this a sponsor where you think you could ask for $5,000 to cover your registration or team uh, travel? 
or is this a company that maybe five hundred dollars is is a a better start point or fifty dollars right so think about kind of how much are you going to ask for i always say like ask higher they can always come back lower um and then don't forget to ask for a commitment so you've made the ask but at some point you need to get them to do something so you know send the check or send me an email now or what is it how do you you know ensure that they've actually agreed to do what you're asking for um, and then you can do it by phone, you know, do it old school. Sometimes it's harder to say goodbye, uh, say no to a person or especially if it's a student calling. Um, so often they'll listen when it's a student and, um, you know, at least maybe you can get, you know, the door open or a right person to contact. Um, you know, think about emails. Sometimes you have to, you know, be careful. They can go to junk or spam or, you know, you don't get it to the right person so it doesn't get opened. So the better you can do it, getting a good quality email to send it to, that's good. Um, just mail something out. So if you come up with a, a sample letter, you tweak it to their business and then mail out your sponsor package, you could do that. Um, some of the bigger companies we found, like if you think you want to go for a bank or a big car company or a, like a lot of big companies have a program in place of how they organize their sponsors so sometimes it's on their website they'll say like sponsorship requests and you have to fill out an online application so if you're looking for a big company i would say check their website to see if they have that process because they possibly won't look at another reproach they have maybe you know a hundred teams uh submit to them they sometimes have deadlines as well and then they have a team that chooses who will you know which of the 10 teams they'll support that year so um you know kind of be aware that that could happen anything you want to add there brian um yeah I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the personal touch and we've we've done this at our team every every student has some sort of personal connection with three companies it could be through a relative, through a friend, through a aunt, uncle. And so if you, that personal touch makes it a lot more successful and a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's how we got uh, two full restaurant meals uh, one year. Is, uh, it was a student's favorite restaurant. So her oh, yeah. uh, and her family ate there frequently. So she just asked them like, oh, we love your food. Is there any way you could you know, feed our team. And they, and they said, yes, and donated two meals. That's a lot of money, you know, that yeah, it saving. Is. so that was an awesome, you know, like, you know, things you might not think of. So good. Yeah. Point. Um, then you might need to follow up with them. Not everybody moves that quickly when you're asking for money. Um, so you, you know, you can do the, like, Oh, I haven't heard back from you. <laughs> and then you, you know, kind of have to tell them that this time sensitive, you know, you're on a schedule, you know, you just found out the game and you're in action and you have competition coming up. So help them understand, you know, why, um, you know, it's a, it's a time sensitive issue. Um, focus back on what it was specifically that you asked for. Kind of make sure you're listening to them. If they're like, ooh, money's a problem, then, you know, revert to your wish list or, um, you know, start thinking about a mentor. You know, like, what can you, how can you make the connection? Do they need any information? Sometimes they'll say like, oh, I think it's a great idea, but my boss will need to see this or something. Um, so get them whatever they need to be able to sell it. So if they need like, oh, could you send us a team picture or could you send us a picture of the you know, old hand tools you're using now and that'll help me convince them that you need new tools, you know, like, so, you know, help, help them with what they need. Um, offer if they would like your students to come and give a presentation. Uh, if you can get your students in, uh, it's really hard to say no to these students because they're so excited and passionate and interested and um, that you want to help them. So, you know, offer if, if it would help if the students came in and spoke to them directly. It's great experience for your business or marketing team as well. So 
um, you know, that's an option to offer or offer to bring your robot in if they have like a, you know, you could bring it in at lunch or after hours so people could see like it's a staff fun day or something um, or their Christmas party or, you know, like there's some um, times that, you know, might be fun for them to let their staff see what it is that they're thinking of supporting. Anything you want to add there? Uh, this is, again, our team in the past couple of years, student presentation has been very successful for us. Sometimes like when there's a lot of uh, groups that want speakers at their events. And so our team comes out and presents themselves and not we never ask for a donation, but we almost always leave with a donation. So. Yeah, that's great. All right. And moving on, how do we keep them? Okay, so you've got your sponsor. You have to cherish them, okay? So you have to, first of all, give whatever it is you promise. So if you had tears and it was like, we're going to put your name on our T-shirt, make sure you do it. If you say you're going to put the name on the robot, like make sure you do that. Uh, other options are you can have their name up in the pits. Um, you can put their name on a flyer like if you have a handout about your robot or about your team that you you know use at outreach events you can have their names there you can put it on your website um, so you know whatever it is that you promised them make sure you follow up with that um, sponsors love updates so if you can do a regular update maybe there's somebody on your team that's interested in you know sponsorship or or business or marketing, you know, have them write kind of like a blog or a monthly update, uh, just what's the team doing this month and this is what we are doing, add a photo and, um, you know, cast it out to your sponsor list, make sure you put the BCC so that they don't all see each other, but, you know, like send it out to all your sponsors. So it can be kind of quick if you get yourself organized. Uh, but um, it really makes a difference. They feel like connected to you and they can watch what's happening. Um, show how they made a difference. So give them some student quote, you know, that if you overhear a student saying like, oh my gosh, this tool is the best tool ever, you know, like just include that when you speak to them or, or mention it to them or include a photo um, again, offer for them to come and see the team in action. Maybe they can come to one of your practices or they could come to the event and watch your team. Uh, maybe they could come to some community event. If you're out at a fair or something, invite them like, oh, hey, our team will be there. If you wanted to drop by, bring your family, you know, it's free, um, you know, so they can start to feel more connected Then it's harder for them to, um, you know, step away because they start to feel like the team is part of them. And then I know most, many teams have like a year end celebration where, you know, you kind of stop and think about, you know, your successes and maybe debrief what you want to uh, change for the future. So if you're having some kind of celebration, anyways, um, invite your sponsors along to that as well because then that's a great time to say thank you to them. Um, uh, other tips from you, Brian? Um, again, uh, my biggest, my favorite one is the personalized photo because most companies and businesses that we deal with that are big into the social media, and if you, it'd be amazing how fast if you send a personalized photo that has the tool they donated or some way that they helped, it'll be on their social media in five minutes because it makes them feel good and helps them as much as they helped you. True. I, I didn't include social media at all. And that's a great thing as part of like the regular updates, because it's so quick and easy to do. Just take a photo and, you know, shout out to our sponsor and at them. Um, yeah. And yeah, you'll see them retweet, retweeting. And yeah. yeah, that's great. And I think that was all I was going to kind of mention. Just, you know, keep it in mind. Uh, it does, you know, cost money to run a team, but this is part of the useful part of the program because it's uh, or another useful part of the program because it teaches those life skills of, you know, connecting with other people and listening and working together as a as a team or a community to to accomplish things. So it's 
it's really a, a cool way of, of building the team outside of the mechanical aspects of it. Uh, so if you have questions, I would just say, I, I, I kind of wrote this slide about sponsors, but I would say it's to do with anything. Um, but, you know, talk to other teams. How did you find your sponsors? Who are your sponsors? Maybe somebody who sponsors another team might be willing to sponsor your team. You're in a different city or, um, you know, they, they might, now that they know about the program, they might be interested in uh, sponsoring multiple teams. Um, or they might have tips on, you know, how how they approach somebody. That's where that 100 for 100 came from, was from another team. Um, you can go on the hubs and say, like, we're having trouble finding sponsors or finding mentors. Can you give us any tips? Like, what could we do to uh, find a sponsor? Um, check uh, teams' websites. So if you're like, how does this team do it? Go to their websites, and uh, almost all FRC teams have a tab for sponsors. So it's part of the way that they're giving back, but it also helps you see how are they recognizing it. A lot of teams put their sponsors sponsor packages on um, the their website, so you can kind of see some samples for that. And one other thing I should mention is some teams have used um, crowdfunding uh, to be able to support them. So it, that might work for your team as well to put up a fundraising page on, um, you know, social media somehow to get people to uh, donate that way. Sometimes parents find that an easier way to donate. Um, so that's another option for you. Any final thoughts from you, Brian? No, nope, sounds good. That was very well done. Yeah, I think um, it's useful to uh, build those connections. Yep. And I think I don't see any questions right now, but you know how to how to uh, get your answers if need be. Um, I just wanted to mention about the next X, the expert. Please enjoy your holidays. I would just say have a wonderful break. Get lots of sleep. Um, plan to come back in the new year. Kickoff is January 4th. You're, you're going to have lots of fun, at, which will make your long, long winter nights just disappear quickly. <laughs> You'll be busy and happy. Um, on January 7th, we're going to do our next Ask the Expert webinar. The game will be released by then, so everybody will be buzzing about it. So 772 out of Windsor, uh, Sabre Bites is going to talk a little bit about the game release, maybe what some uh, first thoughts are uh, about strategy and um, tips, things that have popped out to them um, or in discussion with, you know, Windsor teams. So they'll share some insight on that. And then there's going to be uh, some information on coding provided to you from Team 771. So, uh, you know, they'll give you some information on basic uh getting started and where to find what you need and um, tips for you on that. So I think that's it for tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming and uh, we'll see you in the new year. Uh, final thought, all of these webinars are up on First Robotics Canada YouTube channel. So if you didn't catch it tonight, it'll be there for you to watch at a later time. So thanks so much, Brian, for coming out tonight. I think that was really thank useful. You. And um, happy holidays. Yep. Happy holidays, everyone.